I'm so excited to show you through one of our brand new curriculums, Rabbit Trails Through Science, Reptiles and Amphibians. So this is a lesson that my son begged for us to do. So we had to add it to the list super soon because he was so excited to learn more about some of his favorite things. I don't know if you've seen some of our promotional pictures. We even have our little uh, leopard gecko in some of the pictures because of course, why not, right? He's there to be the perfect prop for it. So I'm thrilled to show you through this. Um, so let me get this shared into our group. So if you've been looking at some of our walkthroughs, um, I've talked a lot about um, our Facebook group that we have because it is a place where it's the most, it's the easiest place to get um, all of your rabbit trail stuff as far as information. Um, we had a launch party in there uh, last week. And so if you're wanting to get any information on rabbit trails, if you want to be the first one um, to see any of the new curriculum, that is the place to be. But it's so much more than that because it's really a place for community where we can come together as homeschool moms. We have wonderful conversations in there every single day. So I'd love for you to join us. It's Relaxed Homeschoolers the Rabbit Trails Way. And so I'll put a link down below for you guys too so you can really easily find it as well. So let's get started. Let's talk about our brand new curriculum. So if you have looked into any of our sciences before, you will know that we use um, reference books and poetry books for our main books for the curriculum. Where for our literature and our history and all of that, we have um, different picture books for the entire main part of it. So it's a little bit different in that this has reference books as opposed to the picture books for the main books, but there's still plenty of picture books inside the curriculum. So you will have a great chance to get your hands on some of the best picture books out there about reptiles and amphibians. So our main books, the first one, sorry, my birds are super happy right now. <laughs> We're gonna put on a little fun for you guys. So the, our main book is Explanatorium of Nature and it is a beautiful book if you're familiar with our birds curriculum. It's the same book um, that we use in our birds curriculum and we'll be using it for other curriculum moving forward as well. So anytime we have a nature theme, it's going to be coming out of this book because make it easy, right? Buy one book, do multiple lessons out of it. And it's just such a well done book. The pictures inside of it are amazing. The um, different diagrams and stuff inside of it are really great. Here's one of our pictures. I mean, it is just so good. So it shows you the life cycle down there, these huge pictures that are just, they're just awesome. I love the details of it. Let me flip to a few more pages over for you. So it just has so much for the kids to look into. I love it. So like I said, that's our main reference book. And then we also have a poetry book, Lizards, Frogs, and Pollywogs. Such a cute book. So there's poetry in every single lesson that go along with the poems in the book. So cute. Oh, I love this gecko one. So adorable. So um, those are the two main books. I'll show you some of the picture books that are inside the lessons as well here in just a moment. But let's take a look um, first at what lessons are actually a part of the curriculum. So let me scroll to that on the website. Okay, so there are um, 16 lessons inside of this curriculum. And so in each of the lessons, you're going to be learning about reptiles and amphibians, tadpoles and frog spawn, how frogs move, frogs communication and defense, salamanders and axolotls, that's a really popular one, uh, snake scales and shedding, snake senses, reptile eggs, crocodiles, chameleons, geckos, twataras, that's my son's favorite, snake movement, snakes kill and eat, turtles and tortoises. So you will learn about a ton of critters inside of this curriculum. It is so jam packed full of just amazing information and just so much fun for the kids. So I'm going to be showing you guys through our reptiles and amphibian lesson. This is also uh, the sample lesson that's on my website. I'll put a link to that down below for you guys. Um, so that you can get a sample lesson, a sample schedule, look over all of the lessons again, um, so you guys can see everything that's inside the curriculum. Okay, so the first thing we always have is the actual lesson part. So this will tell you what pages to read in our Explanatorium of Nature book, um, and it will also um, have an observation and journaling. And so like I said, the diagrams inside of um, 
Oh my goodness. Our nature book. <laughs> I can't say explanatorium right now. Um, all of the diagrams in there are absolutely amazing. And so it gives your children the opportunity to do some of that copy work um, to make some of those diagrams themselves. Because um, I've discussed before as well that being able to do that nature journaling is so great for our children because it gives them an opportunity to have that mode of memorization. I'm a very visual person. So when I take notes, I remember what's on there, especially pictures. I remember where on the page it is and all of that. And so your kiddos who are visual learners are just going to thrive having those. And even the kids, sometimes the actual um, point of drawing it helps them with the memorization, right? And so nature journaling is just a wonderful, wonderful way um, to have kids kind of get that ingrained into their head and remember those things really, really well. There's also copy work that's a part of every single lesson. So one piece of copy work is going to be our poems from our poetry book. And you can do this on your child's level. So if they're younger, have them just write a little bit of it. If they're older, they can write the whole poem. And then same thing with our Bible verse, that every lesson will have a Bible verse that will kind of tie in to um, the theme of our lesson. And so same here, have the kids write as much or as little as they're able to based on their level. And there's always going to be a little Bible lesson that goes along with the Bible verse as well. And so this will just be a way to tie that Bible verse even more into the lesson. And a lot of times we do great apologetics lessons here as well. Um, just because if a book, I don't think that reptiles and amphibians has a whole lot about evolution or anything like that in it. But a DK book is going to be more on um, a mainstream level and not on a Christian science level. And so if that's something you guys are wanting to focus on and having that young earth or any of that, that's where you're going to be getting it is inside of our Bible lessons here is it's going to be focusing on apologetics and just really focusing and bringing everything back to the Lord um, because that's really important in our homeschools is to have our faith be a part of it. Next up, we always have our some fun. And so there'll be some type of hands-on activity, whether it is um, a craft, whether it is um, an experiment or anything like that. And so it'll have all the instructions here. What, baby? No, we woke up. I know, daddy's up there, okay? Um, dad's at a store. He went to the store that have Ethan help, okay? I'm gonna be done in just a minute. Camp to got him. Okay, thank you so much, baby. You say hi? Oh, now she's like, oh, they're watching me. <laughs> I'm going to be done in just a second, okay? All righty. Okay, um, so it'll have everything that you need to do here, and any supplies that you may need will be right there. And then, of course, a beautiful picture of what we did um, in our own homes, making the curriculum for you guys to see. All right, and then next is, of course, the rabbit trail section. So there'll be more books to check out here. There'll be video suggestions, all kinds of fun stuff just to go even deeper into these lessons. And my pages are sticking together here. Okay, then we have our library list. Again, more books for you guys. Do you have to do every single one of these books? No, do what you have at your library, do what you can find at home. You do not have to buy all of these. If your library has something different, have something different on these topics. It doesn't have to be here. These are just suggestions to make it easy on you guys. That way you can just go on your library's website, put the books on hold, makes it super easy for you instead of having to search it for yourself. And then last but not least, we have our more ideas page. So these always start with vocabulary um, on every single lesson. So your older kids can be looking these up themselves in the dictionary. This is a great, great skill for them to have. Um, for younger kids, you can just go over them together. It doesn't have to be anything, you know, it doesn't have to be full of pressure or anything like that. Keep it fun, keep it lighthearted. And then there's going to be even more suggestions of different projects and whatnot that you can do. Sometimes we tie in math, sometimes we tie in art, sometimes there's even more experiments for you to do. So there's always gonna be different suggestions of different things to take it even further down that rabbit trail. So let's take a look at some more of the picture books that we suggest inside of this. I have a pile of some of our favorite ones for you here. So the first one is Joan Proctor, Dragon Doctor. Such a good book. We really love this one. Of course, we have to have Mossy. We've got Verity. I'll be right up, baby. I'm almost done, okay? Okay, okay. The Reptile Club. The Salamander Room, another really great one. 
and flashy, fantastic rainforest frogs. So these were all the ones that my son requested that we buy. So I have to have them for my reptile and amphibian lover. So that is it. If you guys go uh, to the website, like I said, there's a sample uh, lesson for you guys to try out. There's also a sample schedule. So this is uh, 16 lessons, and each lesson is meant to take two weeks to go through, making it a 32-week curriculum. Um, and so there's a sample schedule of how you can lay that out if you're wanting to do it all five days during the week. We don't do our science that way. We do science two to three days a week, so we do larger chunks and we'll do more things during those days as opposed to doing a little bit every day. Make it work for you. That's why I don't put an actual schedule in by the curriculum because I don't want anyone to feel like they're tied to what my made up schedule might be. I want you guys to do what works great for your own homeschool. So there's that sample there for you to see how it could be laid out if that's what will work for you and so you can easily see how things be moved around in there as well. But that is it. If you guys have any questions, I would love to hear them. Put them down in the comments. And for now, I think that is it. And I'm going to go take care of my little one who's apparently not happy upstairs. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for joining me.